But what preceded it is exactly what Linda was talking about. We go into the states that we do. Often we will do a puja, and we will uh, and, uh, teach people deep meditation and cosmic awareness. And then we have these meditations out under the stars where we go into this universal cosmic mind together and then remote view where these extraterrestrial visitors are and then invite them to come for a gathering of of, of peoples uh, for the creation of a time of universal peace on earth. And that's the purpose of, of really why we're there. And, and it's called ambassadors to the universe because we're uh, teaching people to become ambassadors from humanity to these visitors who we know are here and are waiting for an appropriate response. So when everyone gets into this synchronous state, in this meditative state, we have these amazing things happen. And, and Linda mentioned three of them. One was this strange phenomenon with these bubbles being formed inside these hermetically sealed compasses. And a physicist who was there last year said, well, this is like some type of high-energy um, plasma-like effect. And it happened each time after we had seen that there was an extraterrestrial vehicle that was around us but not quite fully materialized. And we'll get into this in a moment where we have a lot of electromagnetic anomalies and where people can actually see uh, the shape of a craft, but it's it's uh, almost like it's a electronic hologram or an electronic um, uh, energy field as opposed to a solid matter, but it's in the shape of a craft. And then we had, and during the meditation, as soon as I saw that, uh, that of course, often it's reported that these ET uh, craft go in and out of this mysterious valley, and also in and out of Mount Shasta and in and out of Joshua Tree, uh, where we're going to be in uh, November. And these craft are seen going in and out of the earth. And we have actually seen that happen when we were at uh, Joshua Tree National Park uh, the first time back in 96. We had this massive 200 foot or so diameter uh, flattened disc shaped object come straight out of the sky and go right into the desert. And we thought it was going to explode, and it just merged into the earth, and it showed us where they were underneath. And we knew then that, of course, this happened a great deal at Blanca Peak in Colorado. It happens at Mount Shasta. It happens at, at many of the places we go to make contact. Well, this particular site in Crestone is a sandy site that's out on the Baca, which is the flat valley there in the mysterious valley, the San Luis Valley. And... I think that the water aquifer is not very far underneath us because in many places near there, the aquifer, which is I think the third largest aquifer in North America, and of course an aquifer is an underwater body of water, um, comes right up to the surface. It actually bubbles up to the surface. And we know that um, these ET craft have been seen going into the earth and the mountains there and also uh, the, some of the locals call it cheap fireworks where there will be these sort of bright white objects that will shoot straight up out of the earth coming like a falling star but coming up from the earth going into the sky and we've seen this dozens of times so I think our site that we were guided to is a site that's very close to where there are ET vehicles extraterrestrial vehicles underneath uh, the earth and in the aquifer and in the uh, opened uh, sort of carved out areas of, of the earth underneath us because we've had all these strange phenomena happen. And just as I was describing seeing this craft that was under us uh, in the aquifer out of a crystal clear sky, there were no, no clouds above us or around us at all, this most gentle, almost celestial rain started falling. Uh, but it was physical rain. It was water droplets falling on everyone in the circle during this really beautiful point in the meditation. So it's almost like an interplay between cosmic awareness, the consciousness of the earth, and the consciousness of these cosmic beings and extraterrestrial beings that are there. And it's a really beautiful sort of coming together of energies that are uh, quite remarkable and extremely Vedic, if you understand the Vedas and uh, the understanding of, of how the earth is conscious and how everything is consciousness and can interface with your awareness when you're in that state of higher uh, cosmic mind. And so uh, those are the things that happen. And then right afterwards, of course, as Linda said, we have this massive triangular ship that appeared overhead uh, that everyone saw it was astonishing and uh, floated right over us, headed kind of towards the north and northeast. Uh, and then as it vanished, there were multiple other uh, ET craft that appeared in that same area of the sky. Uh, and 
So it, it was really quite remarkable. Uh, the, the sort of uh, I think there were four other ones that were seen, including this sort of blue-white uh, cobalt a colored ship that flies in often that has a very uh, senior extraterrestrial being that I have called Kindness, uh, who uh, I had an introduction to the night after uh, the night that Sherry Adamack, our assistant, passed away in, in uh, uh, 1998, in January of 1998. And, and this craft, by the way, we saw every single night uh, in Creston this year and some nights more than once. And it, it's quite remarkable because it has a bluish-white tint to it. Often it will come in from space and come into the atmosphere and shine a light on us. In fact, uh, last year when we were at this same site in Colorado, we actually had a brilliant beam of light come from that ship and, and shone right on the group uh, as we were sitting out there very, very late uh, out under the stars. So, you know, we just have these amazing experiences, and and most people who... You know, hear these things, it sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, except when you come on these expeditions and you realize that this kind of phenomenon, these expressions of extraterrestrial awareness and, and their uh, amazing ways that they interact with us, is simply not like a Hollywood movie. It's so much more beautiful and so much more interesting than what you see even in a special effects from George Lucas or something. And, and that's what we're doing, and it's wonderful because then people understand that these uh, really very conscious civilizations that are interstellar and can travel between star systems are interacting with us uh, in ways that are um, rather mysterious to people who don't understand it. But once you understand the interplay between matter and space and time,